every year prospects fall and rise on the draft board we did a mock draft at the start of the season and now it's time to look at the top prospects midway through the season so if you guys like my content make sure you like and subscribe let's try to get 20 likes on today's video and let's hop into it With the draft order far from set in stone, we're going to go based on team record for this video. So as of right now, the Golden State Warriors hold the number one pick, a year removed from playing in the NBA Finals. Now there's a lot of talk about whether or not they would make a selection, but assuming they stay put, I have them going with 7'1 center James Wiseman. I talked about the scenario in depth in a previous video, but Wiseman is the top big man prospect in this draft, going to a team that could be a contender with or without him. It appears the return of the Splash Brothers is approaching, and they still have former Defensive Player of the Year Draymond Green. It's pretty clear that James Wiseman is a player that would play a major role for this team immediately. He's seven foot one with a seven foot five wingspan. He projects to be a very solid defender and rim runner with the potential to become one of the top front court threats offensively. Now, after being the number one player in high school, he only got to play three college games before getting suspended by the NCAA. But in that time, we saw enough to know he's the real deal, averaging 20 points, 11 rebounds, and three blocks. I think the Warriors have some of the most interesting draft scenarios, and if they do have this selection, I can't see them going with anyone but Wiseman. With the second overall pick in the draft, we have the Cleveland Cavaliers. The Cavs are in a weird position here due to the fact that they grabbed point guards with top 10 picks in the past two drafts. Right now, the Cavs have Sexton and Garland sharing the backcourt, and it would be a reach for them to take anything but a guard here, so I have them going with Georgia shooting guard Anthony Edwards. Edwards screams with NBA potential. He's a hyper-athletic 6'5 wing with a 6'10 wingspan. He was my top prospect going into this season, and I still believe he's a great prospect, but he has had some concerning efficiency. This season, he's averaging 19 points, but shooting just 41% from the field and 31% from three, but there aren't any major problems mechanically and his ability to score in bunches gives me confidence in him going into the future he's a guy that's going to make an impact on both ends something the Cavaliers need they have a lot of decisions to make and ultimately I think they need to decide between Sexton and Garland and free up a spot for a player like Edwards currently sitting at three is the Atlanta Hawks who I have taking six foot seven guard LaMelo Ball like the Cavaliers, this is a pretty weird position for the Hawks, given all the top prospects on the board are point guards, a position they obviously have filled by Trey Young. Now, this might change by the time the draft comes around. It looks like they're working on roster moves, and prospects that better fill their holes could rise up the board. So as of now, I have them taking the best player available in LaMelo Ball. I'm pretty sure most of y'all know who LaMelo is. He's been in the spotlight since he stepped on the high school court. This season, he decided to go and play in the Australian NBL. He flashed a lot of potential, but also had some concerning production. He averaged 17 points, 8 rebounds, and 7 assists, but shooting less than 38% from the field and 25% from 3. But we do have to consider that this is professional basketball, and we only have a sample size of 12 games. LaMelo might have the biggest ceiling in this draft. He's a 6'7", natural-born scorer that over the past couple seasons has really developed as a playmaker. I also don't really mind the scenario for the Hawks, given LaMelo's size, which allows him to have more positional flexibility, assuming he can exceed defensive expectations like his brother. At four, we've got the New York Knicks. We're going to be taking one of my favorite prospects and a guy flying up the board in Tyrese Halliburton. This is a guy that when it's all said and done, could be a top three pick. He's a six foot five point guard with a seven foot wingspan. He's a disruptive defender with the potential to defend three positions. He's one of the best playmakers in this draft. And so far in his sophomore season, he's averaging 16 points, six rebounds and seven assists, shooting 50% from the field, 41% from three and 84% from the free throw line. So let's make this clear. We're talking about a six foot five point guard with a seven foot wingspan, who's a very solid playmaker and is shooting pretty much 50, 40, 90 in college. I think you get why I've become very high on this guy recently. Based on the Knicks' current scenario, this is a great draft for them to have a top five pick. They have a lot of holes, but the most glaring is the point guard spot, so I like them going after Tyrese here. But by the end of the season, he could have a pretty similar story to last year's second overall pick, John Morant, given he was unranked coming out of high school and got a massive draft boost in his sophomore season. Next, we have the Timberwolves at 5, who are taking USC big men on Yeka Okunwo. The Timberwolves have been one of the most disappointing teams this season. I really didn't expect them to be competing for a top 5 pick in this draft. Onyeka is another guy that's been a major riser this season. He's averaging 17 points, 9 rebounds, and 3 blocks, shooting 61% 
from the field. At six foot nine, with over a seven foot wingspan, he's one of the best defensive prospects in this draft and can play both the four and the five. Defensively, he has the upside to be comparable to a guy like Bam Adebayo. On the offensive side, he doesn't have a very versatile skill set, but he's solid in the open court and has shown growth as a shooter. If he ever develops into a solid floor spacer, the Timberwolves could hit the jackpot with this selection, but that doesn't have to happen for him to have a lot of success in the league. I also like the fit alongside Carl Anthony Towns, giving him help defensively down low. I really feel these two could work off each other. He's another guy that is rising up my board very quickly. At six, we have the Charlotte Hornets taking another board riser in Dayton forward Obi Toppin. They may have found their point guard of the future in Devontae Graham, plus they have Terry Rozier, so I don't expect them to go that route in the draft. Instead, I have them adding to their young group of forwards. Toppin had a solid year as a freshman, getting 14 points and 6 rebounds, but this season has solidified his place in the 2020 draft, averaging 20 points and 8 rebounds, shooting 63% from the field and 36% from 3. He's versatile on both ends, and with his growth as a 3-point shooter, the NBA interest has been flying in. He dominates in the pick and roll, but also possesses a lot of wing skills. He has an NBA ready frame, and I think the Hornets would love to get him to pair with their other versatile forwards and second year player Miles Bridges and rookie PJ Washington. He's another guy that could be fighting for a top spot when it's all said and done. At the start of the year, I really liked this class, but as the season went on, I started to feel less confident. But with guys like Halliburton and Toppin rising, I'm starting to get pretty excited. At 7, we have the Detroit Pistons taking North Carolina point guard Cole Anthony. This is a team that it appears is going into a major rebuild. They've got some solid young pieces such as Sekou Dumboya and Luke Kennard, but I see them going with the best player available in this draft. If they go after a point guard, they've got a lot of options, but I like them going with Cole Anthony here. Again, he's another guy that's got some concerning efficiency. He's averaging 20 points, but shooting just 35% from the field and 34% from three. The concerns go further than that. He's six foot three with a wingspan that matches that. We should never expect him to be an impact player on the defensive end, but his clear offensive talent is what's drawing in top pick attention. At eight, we have the Washington Wizards taking six foot five guard RJ Hampton. While for different reasons, the future for both Bradley Beal and John Wall is very unclear. So I have them going with a combo guard with sky-high upside. Like Lamelo, Hamden decided not to go to college and play in Australia. As a part of the New Zealand Breakers, he averaged 9 points, shooting 41% from the field and 30% from 3. Again, not crazy production, but we do have to treat these numbers differently than if he was playing in college. With his handling and playmaking ability, he could be a point guard, but his size and scoring gives him the potential to play the two. He's a high flyer, and I think this makes the most sense for the Wizards at eight. With the ninth overall pick, we have the Chicago Bulls taking Washington forward Jaden McDaniels. Like a lot of guys on this list, the production doesn't get you too excited, but McDaniels has some of the most upside in this draft. He's a 6'10 forward that is comfortable with the ball in his hands and has the potential to be a Brandon Ingram-esque player. He's a fluid athlete that can rise above the rim and spread the floor. The Bulls have some very solid pieces, but I still don't think they have a guy that can be a number one option on a championship caliber team. I really like them looking for upside in this draft, and McDaniels brings that. Plus, the small forward spot is a position that is for the taking on this roster. For the last pick in the video, I have the Sacramento Kings going with the first form prospect off the board in Denny Avdija. The Kings have their backcourt set with Heald and Fox. They drafted Bagley a year ago and found something this season in Rashawn Holmes. A small forward spot is what they will probably look to address in this draft. I really struggled deciding between guys like Abdija, Precious Achua, and Isaac Okoro, but for now, I am leaning toward Abdija. He's not going to blow you away athletically, but he's 6'8", a great shooter, and possesses a point forward like skill set. On the defensive end, he's nothing crazy, but should be able to hold his own against other wings. With the success of Luka Doncic, teams are on the hunt for the next great foreign wing, which ultimately helps his case going into this draft. Now, I struggled with the bottom of this mock. There's a lot of guys that just barely didn't make the list and could very well be on there when I do my post-tournament edition. This includes players such as Nico Mannion, Killian Hayes, Precious Achua, and Isaac Okoro. I want to know your guys' thoughts in the comments below. If you liked the video, make sure you like and subscribe. Just letting you guys know, my football channel and my Twitter will be linked in the description below, so go check those out. And the shoutouts are gonna be...
Edward, Tyler, Ian, Nancy, and Jayway. If you guys weren't shout out on the next video, all you gotta do is like the video and comment liked or rep notification squad, and I'll shout five of you guys out. With all that being said, hope you guys have a great day and peace.